Hi, I'm Tom Eggett from Tom Eggett Photography. I know it's been a long time since you asked me to do this video, how to sharpen your images using Adobe Lightroom 5. Before I dive into the details, let me tell you what this video won't cover. I won't teach you how to sharpen your images that are the direct result of bad focusing. So if you've been shooting uh, with manual focusing or maybe you use the hyperfocal distance and you got it wrong, then I'm sorry, but what to do in those cases? Well, you take your image or your images, if you're unlucky, and you put them in a bin or better, you put them in a folder so the next time around you go on the same location, you attempt the shot again and that time you get it right. For all the other images that you get well focused and they could do with a little more punch, a little more sharpness, or maybe you have, you don't have this fancy, very expensive lens and um, the result is a little bit soft, well this video will show you how you can improve all this. So what you see here on the screen is a photograph that I took uh, back in June 2014 in Paris, of course. This is the back of Notre Dame Cathedral. I love the place. Uh, it's just a beautiful building. I love how they um, restored it. It was, um, not it was crumbling down, but it was a very dark. I remember when I was a kid, it took probably over 10 years to clean all sides of, uh, of the building. Now it's white, it's beautiful. And what I love about this building is look at the fine details of the craftsmanship. It's just unbelievable. And so I obviously needed to have this image really, really dark sharp. The image as you see here, obviously I've finished editing it. It's, I, I love it, this is how I'm gonna publish it. But it wasn't like this to start with, it was like this. Do you see a difference? Maybe not, let me help you. I select the two of them and I put them side by side. Do you see a difference? Not yet? Let me zoom in. You, you can actually see that the picture on the right, right, is a lot sharper than the one on the left. Although the one on the left, if I had showed it to you first, you would have said, well, it's actually pretty sharp. I can see all the detail. Yes, you need to have a correct, well-exposed, well-focused image to start with. Otherwise, it's not worth it. So, how to go from left to right? Well, let me show you. First, we go in the develop module. And as you can see, I don't have any history. We start at zero. Here we can close the basics here. And everything that we're going to do is gonna happen in the detail panel here on your right. So, as you, first off, you see this little window here. And it's kind of a magnified glass onto your image and you have a selector here on the left so if I click on it and then I can just go wherever I want to it will actually position that magnifying glass on over it and then I can work on the sharpening basically for me that little window is too tiny I've got a 27 inch iMac and that window is quite is bigger obviously than if I had a 12 inch um, screen but it's still too small so the way I work is I collapse this and as soon as I do the do this, you notice there is an exclamation point right here on the left. If I click on this, then suddenly my magnifying glass is basically my entire screen. And this is what I like to use. So then we have the tool, the sliders. And what do we start with? The amount. Guess what it does? Well, increase the amount of sharpening you want to apply to your photograph. So obviously, it starts with zero. And the more you go on the right, the more you're gonna increase your sharpening. And you can already see the, 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 the result. Probably not on the video. So let me go to the max, 150. Let me zoom in. Now let's go at two to, two to one. You see how much artifacts it's happening here. Obviously, it's very, very sharp and look at all the contrast you see on the on the stone here. It's a bit surreal. It's really, really too much. Sometimes it makes it difficult to figure out how much sharpening you need to use in your image. And that will have to do with color. Why? Because certain colors will um, give you a wrong, I was going to say perspective, but a, a, a wrong um, view of the uh, the contrast and the sharpen the sharpness of your image so to help you out let me zoom in and we can just stay at one one not two to one because um, although this was shot with a 5d mark 3 it's at one point we start getting too uh, too close to the pixels it's it's a bit absurd so no pixel pipping no pixel pipping so um what you do 
to help you out is that if you press the Alt Option key on a Mac, while you move the slider, suddenly you end up having the screen in shades of gray. And that makes it easier for you to check how much sharpening you want in your image. So I'm increasing as I go. And obviously I don't want the artifacts that I was talking about. A look between the two towers, that's where the artifacts uh, appeared. Obviously you have it all over, the, all over, but it's easier for me to see in between. So it's just how much detail I want in my photograph and I think right here is not bad at all but there's a lot of artifacts so I'm gonna reduce slightly and I think here I'm pretty happy let's compare it to before so um, to before I just uh, tick right here in the corner that's without that's with without with so I'm pretty happy with this next radius the radius is about the edges, how much of the edges of your pixels are going to be used to um, and compressed to uh, do the sharpening effect. By default is at one. Personally, it's very, very rare when I will mess around with the radius. Why? Because you tend to have halos happening depending on the the situations. Uh, here on this image, I don't think we're going to have much halo. I think we're going to have halos uh, here and along uh, this spear right here. So let me see. When you move the slider, obviously it's very difficult to see what it will do like this. But once again, if you press the Alt Option key on the Mac and you move it, suddenly we have a better view. And you can see as I'm increasing it, we start having some places where it's very, very uh, bright. Um, and you can start seeing the yellow. Look at the over here. Pay attention to that part of the image. And you can see what's going to happen, obviously. Start really getting strong halos, and I don't want that. It's, it's really, really awful. So I'm going to reduce it, and in fact, on this one, I'm going to go back to the default value of 1.0. I'm happy with this. Then the details. So obviously, the detail slider is how much of texture do you want in your photograph to be pulled? And... Um, this is similar if you watch the video that I've done several months ago about the, the spread frequency for portrait. If you haven't, well, you can click on that link right here on your screen. Um, but basically, back then I talked to you about uh, low frequency and high frequency. The low frequency is all to do with the tone, the highlights, the color. The uh, high frequency is to do with the texture, the edges of your subject. And here the detail slider is exactly the high frequency. So the more I move to the right, the more detail I'm going to reveal. But then again, I'm start getting artifacts. Look at this right here. It looks like warms again. Uh, if I bring it back and the default value is 25, then I have a lot less. So how to choose how much you need? Let me go back to one, one, one ratio. Well, once again, use the Alt Option key on the Mac. And now you end up having this great view. So let me actually dis unzoom from here. What kind of texture do I want to uh, retrieve from these images? My subject is the cathedral, right? So anything else really, I don't really care as long as my cathedral is coming out with all the details. So if I press the Alt Option key and now I go on the detail slider, you can see I see my cathedral. If I go to zero, it's not the default value, but if I was to go to zero, you can see there's some part of the cathedral that I really don't see. So starting at 25, like this, we already see uh, the stars. We see the stars made up from the from the lights right here, the light poles. We see the detail about the cathedral. Let me click again, and then I'm just going to increase a little bit more to reveal more details about the uh, the roof right there, and that's. That's about here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And now if I actually zoom one one, okay, this is what we have. So we have a little bit of artifacts right here. Uh, and that's because of the sharpening. Another thing that you will notice as well is you have those uh, pixels that appear here red. Uh, that would mean that it's burn a pure white um, pixel. You could use the brush and go over them. For me, I've noticed it's only a few pixels now and there, and you won't see them 
uh, when you're going to print it. So it doesn't really matter to me. In fact, if you uh, you can see without the sharpening, you didn't have them, but the sharpening actually reveal um, those uh, burned uh, pixel. So I would honestly, I would leave it. Don't pay attention to that. But there's one one big important slider in all this. We haven't talked about it yet. It's the masking. What a masking does is that it will help you define which area in your image you want the sharpening to apply. How does it do it? Well, it's very simple, really. Oh, actually, pretty smart. It will define all the solid pixels, the solid area, all the area that don't have much edges. And um, so it will detect that as a whole and will decide, well, this is actually a whole part that might not need uh, sharpening. So instead of just moving the slider up and down like this, that you won't see much, once again, Alt or Option key on the Mac, and you press the masking key, and this is what you see. Great view. By default, you see it's all white. What is white is sharpened. What is black is unsharpened. So clearly, I don't want the sky to be sharpened. Some part of the water, I don't really care. I really don't. What I care is about my cathedral and the details maybe of the wall a little bit. So this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. I release and this is what I have. Let me zoom in. And actually, let's zoom at 2 to 1. Remember the, the artifacts that we were talking about here? Let me go one step before when we didn't touch the uh, masking. This is what we had. This is what we do now. You see, the sharpening only applied to the cathedral, but not to the sky. So this is it, folks. There's no more secret. This is how you sharpen your images using Adobe Lightroom 5. There's no more to it than this, right? In another video, we will talk about how to remove uh, or reduce the noise in your image. Why? Because, you see, it's in the same panel as sharpening. Why? Because when you sharpen your images, you will tend to play with the darks, what makes the contrast. Uh, and so if sometimes you can end up having noise uh, being revealed by sharpening your image. Uh, here, I don't have any noise. I didn't have that any problem here. Why? Because I've got great combination. I've used a fantastic camera that a Canon 5D Mark III is. Combination with a 24 to 105 L lens from Canon. And I was shooting ISO 100, uh, F11. I didn't have any problem and it was a 30 second exposure. So no problem whatsoever in terms of noise. What I'll do for the next time is I'll find a, an image that really illustrate the noise in, um, in your photograph and we will go and try to reduce that noise using Adobe uh, Lightroom 5. I hope you found that informative and put me all your comments uh, down below. That I really appreciate that. If you like the video, don't forget to put a thumb. I really appreciate that too. And until then, this is Tommy Good saying, if you like it well, capture it and make it sharp. Make it sharp. Ciao.